We play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamer, Steven Luca here from Mini Wargaming to play some Legends of Signum. Now, this is a treat that was sent to us a little bit ago, and now we finally got time to play it. And we read through the rules. We're like, okay, this looks pretty cool. This looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And then we actually played it. So we did a test game before so this, good. and it was so, so good. good. So good. So please sit down and enjoy this treat. This is a hybrid skirmish war game. I call it a hybrid. I don't know if it's actually labeled that. You have models with characteristics. They all have different movement characteristics. They all move around. They all fight differently. They all have special abilities. But you also have a deck of cards that allow you to mess up your opponent's plans, mess up their city, mess up their forces, and allows you to summon your forces to the battlefield. The difference is you don't actually start with everything on the table. You have to summon them there. And you also have a city you're constructing on the side as well. So cool. It's so cool. It sounds like there's a lot going on, but please sit down and watch and enjoy the beautiful simplicity that is Legends of Signum and this amazing game. This is her character card, which I'll go over all of this stuff in a moment. Here we have Roland the Proud, and now I know Steve is a big fan of these miniatures, and believe me, I am too. These are impressive. So this is a game that was on Kickstarter back in May, and it got funded in about 12 minutes, I believe. So obviously here we have the starter set, and everything you see us playing with comes in the starter set as well which is just shipped to us recently. Thus, we play it now. This is his character card, so I'll go over what these things mean. This is his attack, so the little red number here, that's how many dice he throws in close combat. His movement is the medium widget. You can see the widgets over here, so small, medium, large, extra large. And 18 wounds. Now, the goal of this game is to kill the opponent's uh, hero, which is what these are. It's like chess in that way. If you take out the king, you win, and that's it. There's another way to win through prosperity, which I'll explain in a moment when we get to that. But that, I think, I've only played two games, I think that will be much harder to accomplish over killing. It depends on how passive a player wants to be. On the top right, you see abilities. He's got Flight, Charge, Quick, Reckless, and Fortitude. Those give him various abilities in the game, which will go into detail when they come up. And then also, he's, all of your characters gain plus one attack until the end of your turn if they attack the same target as Roland the Proud. So they get better if they're supporting him. And of course, the relic se section in the bottom right simply states what he can be equipped with with the cards we draw. Uh, artifacts, relics, all that stuff. So he can have armor, a weapon, uh, what looks like to be a shield, like a uh, ring, trinkets, and uh, I'm not too sure what the skull one is yet. I haven't come across it, but he can take one of those too. <laughs> one thing I want to note is that there's no points in this game. It's not like you're paying 150 points versus my 150 points, which is just an arbitrary number. It's yeah. you, you build a deck and your whole gameplay is based around this deck. Now these ones here are 30 cards. You're allowed to have a 20 to 40 card deck. Half of them have to be characters, which you'll see in a moment. I'll show up the models. You don't deploy your entire army. You're actually summoning them to the battlefield. Then our heroes always start on the battlefield. We'll put them down there in a moment as well. And with this deck of cards, we also have things like um, twists and tactical cards and just other things that buff our heroes. Now, for the relics, only the heroes can take the, take the relics. The characters are just there to support the heroes. Now, our heroes have 18 wounds each. The normal characters have about one to three, so they're quite easy to kill off. Steve's just working with his deck there, kind of organizing, looking through it to get an idea. He played one test game with me before this. We didn't we didn't go to the end because it, it does take a while, and we, we got the gist of it. Oh, yeah. And over here, you can see his forces, mine are kind of behind me. Now, if you guys haven't watched the unboxing video, I go into greater detail with what you get in the starter set, uh, the unfinished models, and we have the painted models to go beside them, and just to give you an idea of what you get in the start box. So if you haven't watched that, I highly recommend go watch that now because you might be missing some information for this. But if you're more than willing to just try and figure it out from this, then by all means, enjoy the game with us and uh, experience this, like, treasure, I want to say. Yes, it is. It's actually yeah. it's, it's surprisingly yeah. good. This is surprisingly good. It's like, I really, I really like this. <laughs> now, I don't want to compare this to other games, but if you watch this game play out, you might recognize why this might be close to my heart uh, as, uh, as we play this game. This is quite enjoyable, so please stay tuned and uh, enjoy it with us. I'm going to obviously go into detail about how the first few phases of the game work, and then from there we'll be playing, because the start of the game is a little bit slower, and then you get into the details of everything, and then things tend to ramp up pretty quick because you get a lot more resources to play with. You have to start building up your city. There's three different phases. You have your, well, start a phase. You untap all of your resources, your buildings, and all your characters that have summoned or did things. And then you get the construction phase, which allows you to build buildings, which are your main resource in, well, summoning things to the battlefield or using ability cards in your hand. And then after that, you hit the activation phase, which is when you actually activate your models. 
and they, they move about the field, they shoot their weapons, they attack the enemy, they try and take some ground. And that's the main way you win, is through the activation phase. That also is where you play a lot of your cards as well. And you can build terrain on the field at that point as well. Now, we're just gonna get into the game here. The game comes with these six dice. There's three symbols. You have crosshairs on two of the facings, you have a shield on two of the facings, and you have an axe on two of the facings. That means everything's a one in three chance of showing up. Um, they all represent different things in the game. Again, we'll go into detail that when that comes up. Steve and I are just gonna go ahead and roll, and whoever gets the most crosshairs gets to go first. One. I got one. You know what? We're going to say most crosshairs and axes. Okay, so you got no crosshairs. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, you go first. So I'll be the first player. That means I have to put my hero down first. And when you put the hero down, that hero has to go boop, anywhere adjacent to your side of the battlefield. Now, this is my side. That will be Steve's side. And I'm just going to go there. For no particular reason. I've only played this twice before, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try coming right here. And match? Just go right there. Yeah, All right. I'll go after you. So my character is a little bit better at shooting, whereas his character is a little bit better in combat, especially if he has support. So now the game begins. The first thing we do is, because I place my hero first, I'm the first player in the activations, which means I do my phases first, and my activations first, and then play passes to Steve, so he can do all of that stuff as well. Now, that's not incredibly powerful, because when you do fight, you both fight simultaneously. So it doesn't really matter who gets to go first in the activation phase, other than getting to move your models first. Anyways, you start the game by drawing four cards, and every player starts with two Prosperity. Now, Prosperity is the main resource to build your buildings and increase the size of your city. And the city is where you draw a lot of your power from to summon things to the battlefield. So it's a double resource type of game. You have to manage your Prosperity, and you have to manage your city that you build as well. Now, the first thing you have to do when you go first, you get to look at your hand. Now, here are my cards. Steve's not really paying attention, so I, I can quickly show them I'll to look, you. I will look. First card. Second card and the remaining two. Now, to go into some detail what these cards are, I'll try and do this quickly. Here we have a character card. So these are what I actually summon to the battlefield to help my hero. We have a tactic card. These get played face down, and my opponent won't know what these actually do until the certain clause is met. And then, obviously, here we have another one of those. And over here we have an artifact card, which is represented by that little chest icon. And since I didn't get a spell card in my hand, I figured I'd show you what that is, and which is that icon there, and you can see they have different effects. Now, the icons in the top corner are their costs, so if you take a look at those. That means to play that, I have to have built my smithy, and I would have had to build my library to be able to use that. And when we play the game, you'll see how the buildings act as resources as well. And the cost is the same for the rest of these. Now, if you look at this icon, he needs two separate buildings to build. That is the generic building icon. Uh, that means you can use any three buildings to use this card. The same is true for this card over here. And then this relic needs those two buildings to be built. Now over here, similar characteristics to the hero, except of less. So this character has two attacks, medium, sp medium speed movement, and has three health as opposed to the 18 on the hero. And they themselves have their own abilities as well. That's a stealth icon. And he gets a bonus if I build the Guild of Shadows. Now both Steve and myself have unique building chains because of our uh, factions. And everyone, you can bring any amount of these um, buildings you want with you. It's not like a deck you draw from. This is a resource you pull from to build. There's no specific order you build things in. It all It's honestly based on what you get in your opening hands. Is what you need to build right away. And hopefully they become useful later on in the game as well. You're only allowed to have up to 12 buildings built at any time. No more than that. And my guilds are things like the Guild of Shadows, the Guild of Blades, Guild of Merchants. And I think it's just those ones. Now, I'm only allowed to ever build one guild in my city. And you're never allowed to have more than one building with the same name in your city. Now, if, say, you destroy my library, or Steve destroys my library, I can rebuild my library. But if you destroy my, one of my guilds or any of these other unique buildings, I cannot rebuild them. And then these are just terrain cards that we actually summon or construct and put on the battlefield. And when that happens, I'll show you more of that. Now, they have a mulligan rule. If I don't like any of these cards in my hand, then I can choose to put them off to the side and draw two new cards. I'm going to keep... Um, we just get rid of one. You know, we're gonna get rid of both of those. We're gonna draw two new cards. We get this card and this card. And yes, if anyone's curious, I did shuffle and I still ended up getting this afterwards. Funny enough, now Steve is too far away to actually see what I have. So if anyone's curious why you're letting Steve see, well, I don't think he can. I'm so, in my cards anyway. <laughs> and he's, he's he's super anxious over in the corner. He's like, let's play. Let's play. I'll play, I'll play. Let's play. Come on, let's play. Let's, yeah, do, let's do this. All right, let's do this. So okay. And those cards I took out, they aren't discarded. A graveyard will go right here when we play our cards and they're used up. And there's ways to get cards back from the graveyard with abilities that you'll see in the game. But they get shuffled back into the deck. So my deck's good to go. Steve's got his cards. In fact, I think you actually mulliganed all four of your cards. I did. So you got a, a brand new hand of five or four. Sorry. Oh. So now we have the upkeep phase. 
During this phase, you get one extra prosperity to use to build buildings, uh, among other things, and you get to draw one more card, so I'll go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not going to show you every card I draw, because that'll be hard for you to keep track of, even if I did, so you'll just see them as I play them. The next phase is construction phase. I look over at my, I'm going to say blueprints of my buildings over here, and I decide if I want to build any. Now, I have three prosperity. You look in the top left corner, all my buildings require prosperity to build, of varying numbers. Uh, I don't think any of them cost one. It's at least two, up to seven, I believe, being the most expensive. The terrain actually require buildings to produce. Yeah, City Hall being most expensive at seven. So obviously I only have three prosperity, so I can only build a building with three prosperity. I'm gonna choose to spend two prosperity to build the taverns. Now I've constructed a tavern in my city. I'm just gonna put that, uh, I'm gonna put it beside my deck of cards over here to represent that I have that. Now this is a resource I have for the rest of the game unless it's destroyed by Steve. Now I can use the tavern to tap it to use it to play characters as long as they require the tavern symbol or any building sim symbol. I can also use it and pay one prosperity to untap this building. Sorry, that's, I don't have to tap it to do that. If it's already tapped, I can put prosperity into it to untap it. So this could actually count as two Ooh, buildings. Nice. Uh, but that obviously cost me a lot of prosperity, which at first is a very rare, valuable rare. resource to come across. Now, if I chose not to build a building, I would have actually gained a further two prosperity, putting me at five, but I would also start with no buildings. So I don't know what the right call is there. This is just us playing for the first time, but I'm gonna choose to build the tavern. And that is honestly the end of the construction phase. Now we go to the activation phase, which is the more, it's a longer phase. You do more things in it. You activate your characters, uh, your heroes, or your characters, and you play cards from your hand in any varying order. It doesn't matter. I could move, I could activate a character fully, play a card from my hand. I could move a character, summon a character. I could summon a character, move another character. Now when you summon a character to the battlefield, they are, they're tapped. They can't actually activate that turn. They are active next turn afterwards. I'm not actually going to use any cards from my hand, so I'm going to go on to moving her. Now, she's got a movement characteristic of medium. I reach over here, I grab this medium widget, and I put it down, and I can move up to that. Now, I can always do the run action as well. If I do the run action, I can't do anything else afterwards. That's pretty much her turn. Then to do the run, you just increase her movement by one measurement stick. So medium goes to large, large goes to extra large. If you already have extra large movement, you can't run as a rule, just because there's no bigger measurement stick. And that's also what it says in the rule book. So I'll put that down, figure out where she's going. And it's gonna be harder to do with a camera in my hand, I realize, but that's where she's <laughs> gonna go. So she ends up there. She actually has capability of shooting. Now, to tell if your character can shoot, you have to look at their ability card. That symbol there, before the period, means that they can shoot. Now, if it had a longer point at the top, that means they have a thrown weapon. If it's a little squiggly line, it's like magical shot. So they can do that instead. And quick shooter is a rule that says, you can actually sh move and then shoot. Normally in this game, you have to shoot before you move. You can still move afterwards, but you cannot move and then shoot. Now she can move and shoot, or shoot and move, it doesn't really matter. Master shooting two means, because this is two there, it means I can throw two dice to shoot. Master shooting two says I can reroll up to two dice when I do shoot, of the shooting dice. And fortitude makes it so she's always effective in combat. If you take wounds in combat and you go to fight, you're less effective in combat, fortitude ignores that. And now measuring for shooting, very basic. Anything within the extra large ruler is in range to shoot. Now, all models block line of sight, and the way line of sight works is you measure from, as long as you can get a measurement from, like, a direct line from any part of your base to the target's base, you can hit them. Unless they're stealth or uh, behind terrain features or things like that. And now models, even your own, can block line of sight. So I've had a model that was a bigger base than hers right in front of her. She couldn't shoot anything in front of her. And because she moved up, she's not in range to shoot. She ran, in particular. She's done. And that's actually my first turn. And that's how quick the turns can be. The start of the game is quite slow. It's a lot of building up your city and acquiring prosperity and trying to keep your hero safe. Now, obviously the goal is to kill each other's hero. I have the ranged capability to, to plink some damage off of him. But when you see ranged combat, you'll realize, oh, it's actually not that effective to try and kill the hero with ranged. It's all about killing in combat, I find, so far. Right now, so it's your turn. You drew your card. You... Oh, I'm... I have a very simple turn. Yeah, so is mine. Perfect. I'm actually not going to build anything. I want a couple more um, prosperity. prosperity. Yeah. And uh, I had a plan. I could play over here to run right at you, but then I drew my cards. And, and I want to delay a little bit. So I'm going to run. I have also speed medium. But his, he has flight, which means he can move over models and terrain features when they're set up on the field. I'm just going to move laterally for now. Right, so staying out of my range of shooting. Try to avoid. I don't I, know if I am. I might be out of your range of shooting. I yeah, so I move medium and then I could shoot. Because you can move in and shoot, right? Yeah. So you, you, I have to, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so you're out of my range of shooting. Okay. So for one more turn. And like I said, my shooting is not overpowered. I do two shots. I could do up to two damage. He still gets to defend against them. Now, if it's magical shooting, which will come up, there actually is no defense against that. 
So onto my turn. I already drew my card. I get my prosperity, and my construction phase is gonna be very basic. I'm actually gonna hold off and gain two more, two more prosperity myself to get up to four. Activation phase. I'm not gonna play any cards. I'm actually going to. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to there. And that's where I'm gonna move. So I will do something actually. I'm gonna build one of my unique terrain features because why not? So this requires two buildings, so I'm going to tap this for a resource. I'm going to spend a prosperity to untap it, so and then tap it again for two buildings tapped, and I will play an ancient treasury. Treasury. So now I take the token, the neglected treasury token here. Um, actually, might be a typo. I'm not too sure, but it's the one token that came in the starter set. So and nothing else matches. So and it's the exact same. Ancient and neglected could be. The, it could be the exact I mean, same thing. Probably the same thing. So. You put this anywhere on the field except for two things. It can't be base contact with another model, myself included, my own, mine own included. It has to be at least small distance away from my starting area and at least medium away from uh, Steve's starting area. I'm just going to put it like right there. So what this counts as is a ruins and you can search ruins throughout the game to unlock certain benefits. On this one it says what you get. Uh, you can, if you, you roll, and if you roll a bullseye, this character returns to the hand of its owner and is unsummoned on an axe. All of, you, all of your characters gain plus one defense. On a shield, all of your characters gain two shields, and you gain three prosperity. Now, another thing you can do with ruins when you search them, uh, they uh, unlock secret tunnels to let you transport to other ruins on the battlefield when they're set up. So I'm gonna put that ancient treasury there and uh, call my activation phase uh, Dunzo to Steve. Gathering, drawing, and then I'm going to spend a five of this prosperity to build my smithy. All right. Cause we gotta start building some good armors. For anyone who's curious, this is what the smithy does. It counts as a smithy, costs five, you can tap it, and you choose a character in the game plus one shield until the end of your turn. So a shield means it's a durability token, and that allows them to ignore normal damage coming at them. Not magic. I'm going to use it right away, and then put on the Warlord helmet onto uh, Roland the Proud here. That is that skull little relic symbol. Oh, so it's a helmet, okay. That, that, that makes sense. Now I can go over a relic. Now this is a specific Grafarum Empire relic. In fact, the decks that they give you in the starter set are just unique decks specific to your own faction. So mine's the City of Valor, and yours is the Grafarum Empire. So this is a relic, and this will stay on you until you play another relic that's the same slot, so another helmet, or until its durability wears out. So that is the symbol there. It has three durability, and it's got a small aura that your characters gain the Master of Attack 1 rule, which means that anytime they go to attack in combat, they get to reroll one of the dice. And anytime they do reroll that die, um, the durability goes down by one. Sorry, I was thinking of something else. This is much cooler. Now, this is a Warlord Helmet. It actually gives you durability three, which I said earlier, but that means you get these three armor tokens, which is essentially give you an extra three health. So anytime your hero now takes damage, uh, that's non-magical, so from a normal attack, you actually lose durability on this helmet before you start taking wounds on your character. When all three durability markers are removed, the helmet is destroyed. And until it's destroyed, you gain the small aura of Master of Attack 1. So it gives your character three extra health and that little bonus. And you can spread out the damage from multiple attacks onto your hero if you have other relics with durability. Not from a single attack though, if that makes sense. But that is really cool, huge fan of that. So he gets an extra three health, he's a little more defensive, and he has a small aura of helping his characters which is this. Anything that's within that gets an extra attack. It doesn't have to be wholly within, so it just has to be touching the base. And then, then we're gonna go get aggressive. We're gonna keep you out of our territory. We're coming to take your home. I mean, bring law to your home. Thank you. So, running forward. We're gonna bring you some peace. <laughs> I think My turn, I drew a card. Gain a prosperity, putting me at four. And you untap all of your cards as well. So your buildings and your heroes, if I, w if I was to have any. And then I draw a card. I've already done that. Uh, now into my construction phase, I'm gonna spend four of this prosperity, so I only need three of it, to build this school of magic. So I got a tavern and a school of magic now. We will tap the tavern and the school of magic to summon a character to the field now in the activation phase. And we summon Daniel Valor's Hawk. This is a roguish character. He's got stealth, which means he can't be targeted by certain attacks and he can't be seen unless something is within range and you have to roll a die to see if you see him. We'll get to that when we get to that. And he can't be targeted by shooting attacks either until he chooses to reveal himself when he attacks. So he's free to roam the battlefield and uh, try and be a bully. Now, when, yeah. he, when he appears on the battlefield, he can immediately move to contact, uh, sorry, can immediately move in contact to them. Right there wrong. When ruins appear on the battlefield, he can immediately move to them which allows him to move around quickly. Otherwise, he just summons, boop, 
right there at the edge. Did you just draw that card? Because so many ruins already. I just, uh, yeah, I actually read it a little differently earlier, but that's okay. I thought it was when you summon him, he can go to ruin. Oh. Uh. But that, that's fine. That's fine. I, I had nothing else to do on the turn when I summoned the ruins, so I'm like, I might as well summon the ruins. So he's actually going to go right here, just so he can go and search ruins later. And he is currently stealth. Character card will go beside my hero card, tapped, because he can't currently do anything right now. All right, Steve always ready. Draw, let's see what this card is, though my plan is not. <laughs> it's, not gonna it's not going to change. I'm gonna it, do it, it was close to changing. Did you mean to shoot me or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do that. All right, I'll stop. That's fair. That's fair. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and shoot. This is the range of my shooting, so we're good. Nothing's blocking line of sight. Now, the way this works is I roll two dice because I have the shoot uh, characteristic of two, and I'm master shooter two, so I can re roll these dice. Boom. So I miss both times. I'm looking for the crosshair that I get to re-roll. So I got one crosshair. Now the way shooting works, for normal shooting attacks to thrown attacks, it doesn't matter how much attack dice your opponent has, they can only roll one die for each time they're hit for defense. <laughs> you need a shield. So that means he takes the damage, but because of his relic, he only takes uh, a durability on the helmet. And now I'm actually going to move. Now I can't run after shooting, but hey, I where will. You go? Where are you going, you coward? But I'm gonna go backwards. No. <laughs> I'm not looking for a fight unless I have support. So no, no construction? Back to me, I'm not going to build. I need a couple more uh, prosperity. And... <laughs> oh, man. So the thing is, it's very easy to outrun combat if you have a faster character, but there's only so much area to play with. In fact, this is a 2x2 two two if anyone's curious. So, I just wonder if I could... Just get outside of my shooting range? I don't think it's going to happen. Because you just go ping, 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 but I don't want to get drawn all the way back there. Right, so the, the thing is, if he does chase me into my territory, I could summon things to start swarming him. You know what I'm going to do? I with my charge. I'm going to uh, run. Okay. Just so I know. Maybe he's going to back up just a bit, actually. You know what? Whatever. I'll get you. I'll get you. All right. I'll so you're just doing a normal move then? Just you want, a normal move. Do you want to run? Go a little bit further? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I do. I just want to go. Just a bit. Just okay. a bit. Gotcha. I don't get now, Roland the Proud does have bonuses when it comes to defense, or sorry, charging as well. So if I do deny a charge, he would lose that extra attack, and then we're just straight up fighting. But, uh, I mean, he's got that extra two health on me, and in my experience, fighting between the heroes doesn't really amount to much unless there's support. Again, 18 wounds. That takes a while to get through. So I drew my card, got my prosperity. I think during the construction phase, I'm just going to pass and gain two prosperity. Back up to four. Now I'm going to tap the School of Magic for its resource and this tavern for just the generic resource. And I am going to summon the terrifying Mirkar Tentacles, a weird tentacle wizard. It's this guy. Whoosh, he pops up over here. Now he is unique in the way that he actually has a magical shooting attack, which does go through defenses. But he only has one shot, and he's, he's not a quick shooter either. So he has to kind of move and he has to shoot and move and shoot and move. So he has to actually get in range. So he's going to go right there. And if he dies, he has an ability called Last Word. Each player draws a card from their deck. He's only got two health, though, and he's slow. But Daniel here is going to move in contact with the neglected treasure. Treasury there. He's just going to move over there, though, instead. And he is a secret stealthy boy. And that's him running, so he can't search after running. And his turn immediately ends after running as well, so uh, it's pretty much it for him. So for her, she's just going to shoot you with her gun again. So she got two shots, Master Marksman 2, so I can reroll up to two dice. I got one hit against you and you ignore it on a shield. You don't, you lose a little bit of durability. And then I'm going to move as well. Bam! You coming in? Yeah, I'm coming in. How's that? Let's fight. So this is how fighting works. Uh, you look at your character card. I have two attack dice. I'm pretty sure Steve only has two attack dice I as well. I do. But he's got the rule Reckless 1, so I'll get into that in a moment. Now, because Steve is the defender, he has to dictate, does he want to put his attack dice into defense, into offense, or one into both? Now, because he has Reckless 1, he has to put at least one into offense. Offense, both of them. Both of them into offense. So that means that now I get to choose whether I want to put dice into offense or defense. I'm going to go double into offense as well. Now, because no dice are in defense, we don't have to worry about that, but I'll still go into detail about that when it comes up. So now both of us roll our dice at the same time or run after that, it doesn't really matter because we attack at the same time. So anytime you roll an axe or a shield, because we're not wounded, we do a damage. Now, if we were wounded, we would only roll an axe or a sh uh, sorry, only axes hit, not the shields. But if you have the special rule fortitude, which both of our heroes do, then we ignore that. We always hit on axes and shields. Now, in this case, we both did one damage to each other. Now, hypothetically speaking, if some of us did allocate some of our attack dice into defense, we'd only roll the amount we put into offense, and then we would be able to roll our defense dice afterwards, 
and then if you roll a shield, you stop the damage. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's shield. I'll double check. These both of us take a damage. You lose your last durability, and the helmet is destroyed. So that goes to the graveyard, which can be uh, reacquired through certain means of the game. And then that will end my turn. And now we're both in combat, which means the only way to leave combat is to do a normal move out of combat, and you get a backstab against you if you do so, and you can't run out of combat. Steve's turn, he gets his stuff. Okay, well, I'm gonna spend four to build my library. Okay. Which I am then going to immediately tap, oh, I'll tap that, and spend my other um, prosperity to bring out Cassandra. Oh, the healer? Where'd she go? I moved all the models. <laughs> Show her off for you guys to check out. She's got the heal one ability, she's got flight, and she's got first word. Can heal up to three targeted Empire characters by one. And she's part of the Grafarum Order. So when she enters the battlefield, she can heal three things, but there's nothing to really heal. She can only heal characters, too. So where's she going? Oh, bam. Right over there. Right over there to help out. Now she's quite fast. Her attacks aren't that great. And the healing is very, if you're curious, it's very much like shooting. You have to do it before you do anything on your turn. You can't move and then heal, but I don't think it really matters because heal is uh, like table range anyways, you can, or board range. And we're gonna tap the smithy and give her uh, durability, a shield. Yeah, it gives her a shield, but only lasts until the end of the turn. I don't think you can hit me, but just in case. Right, yeah, because it's not doing anything else. All right, let's do So now you activate Roland. All right, um. I assume well, you're just gonna fight. Yeah, but um, do you just have to declare your dice first? I do have to declare my dice first. I'm gonna go both into offense, because why not? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do every time. And you have two hits, so I have zero hits. Oh, I, no. I, I just take two damage right there, folks. So I'm at three, I have 15 left. Now again, you do have to get up to 18 wounds to kill someone. So it's gonna take a little bit to get there, you, especially with our, even though it's our heroes fighting each other. And then that's gone. Yeah, I just realized it's until end of my turn, not my next turn. <laughs> so the smithy, yeah, the smithy is good to use. If you're gonna like, someone's gonna charge, a character's gonna charge into combat, give them an extra health for that combat because you always fight at the same time. So I get another prosperity, I draw another card. And if anyone's curious, your maximum hand size is 10, and they have a brutal way of punishing you if you get to over 10. <laughs> so you have 10 cards in your hand, I have seven. And you're gonna draw a card to put you at 11. Before you draw a card, you have to actually randomly discard a card from your hand of 10, and then you draw your 10th card. So you could lose something very useful. So with my five prosperity, I'm gonna build a smithy as well. It's kind of critical with the cards in my hand. I'm going to tap all three of these building resources, and I'm going to play, bam! Milady Rosalinda, the captain's daughter. She's got a nasty ability. I have to tap her, and on a roll of an axe or a shield, a target opponent's character within extra large range skips its next turn. So she gives up her turn. Well, I guess she can still act and then do it afterwards. And then she taps herself to make someone else possibly miss their next turn. She's only got two health though. So she's gonna go ahead and deploy right. Uh, well, she'll go with the weird uh, tentacle wizard. <laughs> Your card tentacles is going to run. So he is gonna go to there. You know what, we're gonna activate Daniel, Valor's Hawk, or Valor's Hawk, and he's going to search these ruins. Now with the ancient treasure, this is what I roll to see what I discover on a crosshair. So on a one or a two, he goes back to my hand, which is not great. On an axe or a shield, the good things happen to him. I ideally really want a shield and I don't want the crosshair. Hey, nice. So he gets plus two defense permanently, and I gain three prosperity. That's huge, I think that's really big. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that, um, I wanna, th there's a way I wanna try and show that it's been searched. So once something's been searched, it can never be searched again, but if it's searched, you can go up to it, and yeah, there's no real flip side. Same, yeah. I guess I can put it upside down to myself, but we'll remember it anyways. If you go to search it after it's already been searched, you're looking for a secret entrance to another searched ruins on the battlefield, and your character, if rolled properly, I believe you need anything but a crosshair, you teleport from where you move from one ruin to the other ruin, no matter where it is. You can't go into base contact with an enemy, but your turn immediately ends. It's a quick way to get from one side of the battlefield to the other. Three prosperity, and three shield, or three, dur or three durability on him. That does end his turn though, and that does not get rid of his stealth marker either. Fight time, I'm gonna put uh, both dice into all yeah, 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 you're the, I'm not yeah. going defense yet. No defense yet, all right, roll her up. Two damage, Ooh. two damage, all right, we both take two. Oh boy, so I only have 13 health left. I don't think I should be doing this anymore. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. How much do you have? You've taken two. two? Oh, I've had a lot of that's right, you had armor. And that, folks, is my turn. So Steve gets boom. his stuff, prosperity, boom, boom, card, boom. I'm going to, oh man. Oh, do you want to build man. anything in the construction phase? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna build. So you get two. 
Yeah. And then I'm going to, just gonna, I just drew this. I'm going to change up my plan slightly, but we are going to take the two-handed Morgister. It's like a two-handed flail relic. Oh, wait a second. Maybe not. Okay. Hourglass means. Okay, he wants to, but he doesn't know what the hourglass means. So that is, um, it's got a time limit on it. So it only lasts for three turns. So that's actually multiple uses. So it's got three uses on it. Your hero gains plus one attack. And if you have the Templar order building up, uh, when your hero attacks in melee combat, each successful attack die deals one additional damage to shields. So essentially it does two damage to shields or one damage normally. But every time you use it for that extra damage, you get it loses a durability or um, a multiple use. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fight. You know what? I'm gonna put two dice into defense. <laughs> So I'm not going to use that then. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> so I'm attacking. One hit. That means I can roll two dice. And that means, so I'm not attacking back. I can do zero damage. If I roll a shield, I stop this. Oh, also, I'm healing. Oh, yeah. You, you can do that after, though. But when she activates. Oh, sure. So I do stop the damage at me. And then she activates. And before she does anything, she can heal. Which is, she can target anything. So even heroes. So he's only taken one damage so far. So yeah, this, this fight's going to go nowhere. She has to die. Or I have to swarm him. So I got another prosperity. Because of the three I got last time, thanks to Daniel searching the ruins, I'm gonna spend four and build a library. Kind of ramp up on these buildings here. The library allows me to, uh, a character can declare a magical shot without line of sight until the end of your turn. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna play the dual, the dual pistols from my hand, which is a relic uh, ranged weapon for my hero. Just cost my smithy to do it. What this gives her is, um, it's got uh, multiple use too. My hero gains plus two range shots and master of shooting four. So I throw four dice a turn for two turns and I get to reroll any of those dice. Whew. We're gonna go ahead and activate her. Now because she does have quick shooter, I can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and move. She's got the medium movement stick. So we're gonna go like that. And because I'm leaving combat, you actually get to backstab me, which is a single D6 roll. And I believe on an ax you just do a damage. I have no defense against that. It's actually both symbols that work unless you're wounded, then the then only the shield works. It's actually not the axe, it's always, it's actually the shield that is the one, the five up. Oh, gotcha. So the shield is the better combat one. Though I, I figure axe would make more sense, but it doesn't really matter because it's the same value either way. And uh, unless you have fortitude, which he does. So that does do a damage to me as I try and run away. So I'm at six damage currently. And you're probably wondering, well, he's got the same movement as you. He gets bonuses on the charge. Why would you do that? Well, it pulls him closer into my territory as well. Puts, puts him in a more threatening range where all my characters are kind of getting closer. And it still allows, allows me to shoot because I'm a quick shooter. So I'm going to use my dual pistols. It's only got one use left on it. And I get to throw four dice when shooting now. And I get to reroll them. Bam, bam, bam. So I got two hits. Just two hits. So you get two defense dice, shield, stop it. Take two, two damage. All right. So he's taking three. Mirkar Tentacles is going to do a magical shot against you, though he can't um, he can't move and shoot, so he's got one shot. He does the damage. Now it's Bam. magical, so it's just one full damage, takes four, or taken four. Before I move any of the other two characters, I'm going to play what I would consider probably a nasty card, but because, of, because Steve's such a close friend of mine, I have no problem playing this to him. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it requires Library and the Smithy to play. Oh, I cheated on the Smithy available. Ah! Never mind. Never mind. I'm not going to do that. I'll do that later to you, Steve. Don't you worry. Thanks, buddy. Milady Rosalinda. She's going to run. So she's going to go pretty much to there. He's going to move uh, to there. What are you doing? And then, uh, wait, I'm not in range of your charge, am I? No, leave me alone. <laughs> I like being a little bit forward. And then he's going to run as well. And sees medium movement. He goes the large one. And he's still stealth, so you can't quite see him. I can't charge him? No. Well, so you can you can move into base contact with them, and then you have to roll a d6 if you get the proper facing. I believe it's a three up or a five up. I'll double check that. Then you can actually fight them. Otherwise, you just your turn ends. Really? The way stealth works is you have to declare a charge against them. Essentially, you, if you go into base contact with them without charging, you can roll a die on a shield. You detect them, and then you can immediately attack them. Otherwise, you lose your turn, which can be pretty bad. So he's happy there. In fact, everything moves up, and I believe my turn is finished because I don't really have anything I want to play. Okay. Yeah. He has his prosperity, drew his card. All right, so I'm going to spend two to create, where'd it go, where'd it go? The barracks. Very nice. Uh, then we're going to use two of these uh, to build some blocks. Very nice. Okay, so now we're in the activation phase. Yeah, sorry. We're going to... Nice. So the rule for this is, I think I described it earlier, I think. 
maybe not. You, they have to be more than medium away from my territory line, more than small away from yours, and they can't be touching anyone. So rocks just spawn right there, obviously blocking line of sight. <laughs> and we're gonna use these two places to give myself my banner of victory. It gives me an aura that helps my characters, it doesn't matter, but it also has one, two, three pieces of armor. Okay, so increasing his health by a little bit more, which is gonna be hard because he's got, I've already done a good amount of damage to him, but he's gonna heal every turn now too. And then she'll activate him. Heal, heal him. him, all right. Does she want to move it all after that, or is she, is she happy being a heal bot in the back? If she's good there. <laughs> Fair. And he's gonna go ahead and activate and charge in. She's gonna go right into me? Please. So we know that he can make it in because I can only move so far away as his movement as well. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna need an extra die. Are you gonna use your relic? Um, do you have no shield? Um, uh, charges get extra die, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. So you get three for charging. I'm, uh, you have to clear first. I'm gonna put both of mine into defense. <laughs> Are you now? So. I don't wanna take any more damage than I already uh, have. Do I use this? You know what? Let's use it. So you use One more die, please. So you get four dice now. Boop. And no you're... enemy! Ooh. That's oh. three hits. All right, so I need to show shields to stop this. Oh, is that three? That's three damage. I've taken nine damage in total here. Halfway to going down. I guess I should have done off. Ah, whatever. <laughs> that is probably all she wrote for Steve. So I'm gonna gain a prosperity. Boop. And I'm not gonna construct anything either, so I get a further two prosperity. Then we go to the activation phase. I am going to tap my. Mm, no, no. Oh, it is my school of magic. I wasn't sure. The symbol was there. So I'm gonna use my school of magic to play this card. Architects instead. I, can, I get to construct a building in my city, but I pay one less for it. But if I have a library constructed, it's three less. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I do have my library constructed. So I currently have up to six prosperity you right now. You keep building that city real nice for us. <laughs> no. That'll be discarded. And I'm actually going to build a mint, which is only worth four. Yeah. <laughs> this will give me more prosperity later <laughs> for the good free people of Valor. <laughs> there we go. So, because that costs three less, it only cost me one prosperity to use. Are you nervous? What's your, what's your faction called, Steve? Graphonia? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just keep making my watch this. pretty. Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this play here. I'm going to tap this for one building, and then I'm gonna pay one prosperity to untap it. Boop. And then I'm gonna tap these two buildings for three in total, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna play this card, which I'm gonna show everyone here. This is one of those face down tactic cards. Oh no! So it's gonna go right there. Steve doesn't know what it is, but he knows I've played one. So he knows something's up my sleeve. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tap this mint, which I have to do in my activation phase. And I can tap another building to gain a prosperity. Nice. Nice. I didn't have to do that at all. <laughs> what you I know. <laughs> See, but I did it anyways. <laughs> Net zero gain. We are going to be leaving combat again, and you get to do a backstab. So any shield or sword. Dang it, I take a damage. Sad. So I'm taking 10 damage. So I only have 8 health left. And we're going to move just to right. Oh, you know what, we are going to back it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll go right there, that's fine. And uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot you. We're going to use our dual pistols for the last time, so that's its last use. I get to throw 4 dice. Need crosshairs, but it's real old. Never mind. Oh, wow. Oh, that hurt so much. So it destroys your relic. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, that's right. And you take a damage. <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guys, that's the equivalent of a five up, you know. <laughs> we are going to run this sneaky maid, this sneaky assassin boy. I'm going to go there and knock that out of the way. Awesome. We are going to run over here. Boop. Because of rocks, she is going to run as well. That's just going to take her to there. All part of the plan, Steve. All part of the plan. <laughs> so it's your turn. You get your prosperity. You get to draw your card. He's still happy with what he drew. It's just it's more speed. Oh. We're gonna catch you. Oh. Hey, I'm stealth right now. You might not catch me, but you could, I suppose. I'd rather um, you didn't. Okay. Uh, okay. So you are you gonna build well, anything? I'm gonna think for a second because okay. I don't know this is someone. And for anyone who's curious, these templates here, though they do work, I think, better mechanically for game way, uh, gameplay wise, they do offer plastic 3D terrain. It's just we just don't have it painted. That is the same size as the template itself, but it's paintable. Steve Ops, not well, to build. Not gonna build. Okay, so we are using things though. So he's got two things he wants to do. Yeah, so I think I just wanna make sure I can get this correctly. So we need my Smitty, which is. Where are you, my Smitty? 
This one plus one more building will do the rocks. Rocks. And rocks don't count as a building, my friend. That's a train. Why is he building? And this so one. So we'll do that one instead. And it's cost us one. Cost of prosperity? Prosperity. Put plate armor! Because we have all the armor in our hand. Oh my goodness. Don't worry, this one's only plus four. Is that, does it do anything else? Um, uh, yeah, I get master defense and cautious one, so now I have to put one into. Oh, okay, gotcha. So cautious one is the opposite of reckless, where you always have to put one of your dice into defense as well as one of your dice into offense if you have reckless. Show that for anyone who's curious. Uh, you need durability four, master defense one, which lets you reroll a defense die, cautious one. And if you have the Templar order built, it actually gets up to six durability. Yikes. We learn how to go faster with our library for acceleration. I'm gonna describe that. So is that a relic or just a? No, it's a, all creatures gain the plus small move. Okay. Every so every every creature gets to use their base movement plus the small little stick as well if you need it. Yes. Boop, boop, boop. There you go. Because I'm pretty sure we're just gonna well activate uh, her. Okay. We're gonna heal him. Fair. And we're like uh, no. Fair. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. She's gonna run extra large in that direction. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. How far do you run? You're large. Large. Uh, he's moved medium, so he moves uh, so large if he runs. That. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with that. And then we're gonna activate him. And we have the. Oh wait, 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 wait. We have the extra move. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, she pretty. I'm pretty sure you get the extra small movement even on a run. And this guy here is gonna go engage both of them. Oh yes. So now you engage both of them. You have to dictate which one you're actually gonna fight, though. Um, squeaky. A little squeaky. All right. Yeah. So I have to do, okay, so you have to go first. I only have one attack. I'm definitely going to be putting it into defense. Okay, well, I have to put one into defense. I have no choice. Yeah. And you get, two, um, you get three attacks as well because you charged. I only have two. How many, how many wounds do you got? Two. We're going to use my flail. We would get a four, fourth attack. So th all three attacks into offense, one into defense. And you need... You got one Wait, hit! Do you no, have any rerolls? I have some... No way to reroll. I only have one defensive die. I need a shield. I don't. I still take a damage. He's only got one wound left, but lucky to survive. Though I can't shoot if I'm in close combat, so I have to take a backstab if I move away, and that's not ideal. Turn passes to me. I'm gonna draw this. I'm gonna gain two more prosperity because I'm gonna opt to not build anything. I need to build up a little bit more. Oh, these are all untapped. Onto the activation phase. Here's that really mean card I will try to play. Now I can actually do this one, so I have the smithy and the library to use for that. This is an earthquake in your city. So I'm gonna roll a die. If I roll a crosshair, I destroy a building up to two prosperity. A, an axe is up to five, and the shield is up to seven. I don't know what you have there. I, I, do you have at least one worth two? Over there? Uh, yeah, I have two, four, five. So I can only destroy the two one, whatever the two one is. You got my barracks. So that Let's can, be, that can okay. be rebuilt though. Okay. So the only things you can't rebuild are your, your unique ones to your faction. So Earthquake goes so away. So if I had a Templar order you destroyed it, I can't rebuild it? Correct. Ooh. But you can build another order. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna tap the Mint and the Tavern because the Mint forces me to tap another building and I get another Prosperity, so I'm up to six. So that will put me up to six. And then for my characters, I'm a little worried here. Now, she doesn't have anyone in extra large range to, but she's in base contact with him. It's just this claws are in the way a little bit, so I'm just gonna push them back in. I'm gonna actually activate her first. She's gonna move her medium which will put her to there. And then she's gonna shoot him. Because she's got quick shoot, she can again move and shoot. So I got two dice and I get to re-roll, pew, pew, nothing. Oh wow, nice. What, I'm gonna swarm the leader. We're gonna move, I'm pretty sure I'm in medium. So he's gonna reveal himself. Actually, I guess he won't go now. He's, go we're gonna go with, some no, it, definitely him. He's got like way too much durability right now with those shields. He's gonna move in, lose his stealth and attack. Now you have to dictate your dice. No, so. How many, how does this gonna work for multiple models attacking? Right, so the rule for multiple models attacking, I activate him first, this is a normal fight. When I activate these two to fight, you have to put all dice into defense. Because you're too exhausted from the first fight, you're, you're only concerned about defending yourself afterwards. That's a way to stop like really powerful characters from being able to kill one guy, kill the next guy in combat, then kill the next guy in combat. That's fair, so I have to declare put one into uh, defense, I have to. You have to, yeah. So I only have one for attack, but I'm gonna use my last flail. Yeah, and you also have to put one and two attack because you're reckless. Yeah. So you're gonna put two and one. Yeah, so I can't put two and two. Yeah. So uh, we, I have two attacks. I'm gonna put both into offense because why not? Yep. And then that's pretty much it. So I roll two hits. Okay. Uh, my defense is. You need a shield. I, I reroll because that is. Master uh, defense. Yes. 
and no. You guys take a wound? So you take, that'd be two damage, because I hit you twice. Ooh, you, 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 you take him from the durability. Oh, that's right. And now you flail me back. You have, oh, oh no! Okay, okay, I'm pretty sure you can still backstab if I try and move away, so there's no way to avoid that. But the Milady Rosalinda is going to attack. Now the way this works the Milady? The, yeah, ma, the Milady, yeah, okay, the Milady Rosalinda, you're right, you're the right. Milady. That's a little weird. So she's going to attack. Now you, as a defender, have to put all dice into defense, and I attack. So I got one hit, so you have two defense dice. You stop it anyways. And then the weird tentacle guy. Uh, he's, you know what, at this point, whatever. He's going to attack, and you get two defense dice. I hit. And to re-roll is, is it just master defense one? Yes. So you lose the durability on your armor. You take a hit, and that's pretty much it for their turn, because they're too afraid to run away. So, drew your card, got your prosperity, and you said you're not going to build anything not for construction. Build. So you're moving up to seven. I think I know what you're doing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Building that seven cost building, you know, pretty pricey one. Yeah. She's going to activate and heal him one. Yep. And then I am going to... Move about there, right? And he's gonna activate. I don't think I have anything special to play around with. So I'm going to actually I will what's this one here? Get plus one defense at the end of the turn. On her? On him. Because he's gonna use it. It's my turn, right? Yeah, but only you can only put that on characters. Not heroes. Oh, oh you're right. He's gonna go ahead and fight, but uh, who is he fighting? Uh, wow. I have to do one and one. Well, let's try to put down Squigworth. But yeah, he's only got one day. He's gonna put his one attack into defense. So you get a free attack against me. I hit. You hit, so I need a shield to stop it. Oh, I do! Yeah. And that's that's that. Drawing my cards, I'm actually gonna build the barracks in the construction phase instead of getting more prosperity or building the other building I needed. Um, your character's getting uh, shot into the end of your turn. Nothing crazy there. It cost me two, so I go down to four. So we're gonna summon Boris the Potbelly. Ah! It's Steve's favorite character for whatever reason. Ugh. He loves that he calls him tough. He's adorable. He told me. So we're going to use the smithy for that and the newly built barracks and we're going to put him on the battlefield. He has got interactions with other militiamen that are in my deck and anything that's a militiaman will have benefits with the militia tower, the militia watchtower. And also in the activation phase I'm going to mint, tap the tavern, get another prosperity, putting him up to five again. We activate our bad boys. She is going to fire her guns into him. So two shots, re-rollable, re-rollable, no hits. And then she is going to move to engage. Boop. And now a fight ensues. You, the defender, have to declare dice first. Only one. One in each. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and we'll roll our attack day. I'm going to put both in offense. I got zero hits. No! I hate you. So you do a damage to me, and that's actually pretty much it. I just take a damage. So now I'm at, what, 11? I have seven health left on her. So she's pretty hurt. But, I mean, you're in a pretty bad spot. Now I'm going to activate the Assassin. Everything has to go into defense for you. I have two attacks on him. So I have two hits. Uh, because he's not wounded yet. So you take one damage. Oh, master defense. Oh, master defense, right. Nice, zero damage. Dang, all right. Little squiggly guy. Huh. We hit. Master defense. Got my armor. Ooh, I break the armor. Is that the master defense armor? Yep. Okay, good, nice. And now the lady, or Milady Rosalinda, has one attack, one hit. And you have two dice for defense. Nothing. All right. Well, at least I got the armor, I suppose, but there's probably more coming up. So Steve's turn now. I'm Let's... just going to I'm gonna keep one discard six. Discard, you're just going to build a six? I'm going to build a seven. Oh, but... gotcha. Yeah, because you draw one. I understand. Now, this game has unlimited turns until one of the uh, objectives is accomplished. See y'all. Not surprised. Oh, I draw, 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 draw. Yeah. Steve's been struggling. He's been having a All hard time. All low-level characters are not coming out. <laughs> he's, got only, he's only got the big named ones, which is kind of scary because he's actually getting uh, to those things now. Oh, hey, we're going to spend this one. Oh, to summon the guy? Uh, this one, we need one more building, which is going to be my library. Nice. And then we have Ajax. Yo, take a look at this guy. Commander Ajax, Templar Seneschal. Extra large movement on that guy. Three attacks, five defense, rush, which means he can activate right away. How many wounds you got left on your character? Uh, seven. Seven left? Yeah. So he's got master attack two, charge plus one attack, and he's part of the Templar order. Yo, this guy's crazy! Is he going ham right now? I've obviously fallen for your master plan. So he's got extra large movement, which is, yeah. yeah I'm not going yet. He, he has to go after uh, the proud. Oh, I'm just so I need to reroll if he fights the same target. Ooh. So she can activate first. Yeah, we are going to bring her up. Uh, she moves large, so she might as well run. She's going to go extra large movement. I just want to get real close. Just to help out. And then I want to heal. All these wings. 
healing him one, so he's down to one health loss. I've done like almost 10 damage through armor though. I know, I'm way more than that, I think. <laughs> Roland's gonna attack. Uh, so she's gonna go both dice. I have to put one in defense. I'm gonna put both in a defense, just cause I'm afraid. Oh no, I don't do that. Armor's gone. Armor's gone, nice. All off. <laughs> okay. Dang, do it. Oh no, I take two more damage. <laughs> Oh, I'm at 12, 13. I have five health left on her. I may have made a critical error. <laughs> extra large movement gets him in, and because of Roland's special ability, he gets an extra attack because he's targeting the same thing as Roland. I need one more die. Here you go. So he's got uh, four attacks? Oh, one more. He's got five attacks on the charge, and he's at Master of Attack too, so he gets to reroll. I'm going to put all my dice in defense because I have to. So reroll the, the one miss. They all hit. Oh, no. Look out. It's okay. It's fine. Watch this. Oh, you did? Did I just die? I'm Eight, gonna six, nine, 12, 13. I think you won. <laughs> I think you won. <laughs> I was like, I lost it. I <laughs> fell for the trap. So that was five damage. I've taken what? Three, six, nine, 12, 13. That's exactly 18. <laughs> That's exactly 18. I just, I had, I had these cards at the beginning. I was trying to slowly get to it. I'm like, where are my little guys? I need my little guys. I need my little guys. They just weren't coming. But. I just got so- Why did you come up here? No, I didn't- well, I didn't know he had extra large movement! He was gonna go get him! I'm like, oh no! No, I'm gonna get her! I didn't expect the extra large movement guy! <laughs> I- I- I that's just- That's a crazy charge. Rush. Rush and, and that- that's and awesome. And five attacks on the charge because of rolling. That, and master attack too, so re-rolling two of those. Right. That was cool. So she is taken out, and the Grafarum Empire are the winners in this game. So how's our new town looking? How'd you, what'd you build this? Um, so I was actually a pretty prosperous town. I'm gonna nominate this guy the mayor of your new town. Oh, nice. go for the next one. That's fair. Okay, yeah, it's just, you gotta keep that momentum going. And you know what, he's earned it. Huh. I can only put armor and heels. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's, well, like, that's the, obviously feasible. The next game we play wouldn't be like that. I wouldn't get hurt. Like, I had these two on my first four cards. Yeah. Well, I, that, that, that's the beautiful thing about this game, because it's got that card game mechanic. So yeah. obviously this is, if you you watch this game, and if anyone out there knows, this is obviously like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. It's got that magic. Yeah. But the problem with Magic the Gathering is, oh, I didn't get any creatures. Oh, where's my creatures? Where's my creatures? Well, I had well, eight more personally that could have been yeah. coming up, and the game would be way different, right? Exactly. You could have had eight different creatures. The fact is nice, you always at least get one creature down, and they're pretty durable. I turn one, though. That was the thing. I love me crawl. I like Nice. You like a crawl worm. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is the game. Excellent game. Highly, highly recommend. Steve and I are going to go do a review right now after this. Or maybe you watch the review first. I don't know. Uh, stay tuned for that if you haven't. And as always, guys, if you want more information on this game, it's signumgame.com. And this is definitely one of the good ones, everybody. This is one of the good ones for sure. Yeah, this was way more fun than I thought. You know, games come in. I'm like, you don't know. I, I love all games. Okay, I'm I'll always... tell you this. I'm buying this one. Oh, yeah? I'm, I need to own this one. I think I would too. I think this is super fun. And the best part is that deck component. Yep. So you get to con like you get this deck in the starter box, but you can always go out and buy the booster the, packs. Are on the website? They have an undead faction. They have, they have some orcs. Oh, I think I saw a lot of miniatures. A lot of miniatures. So yeah, this is highly recommended for both of us, especially if you like combining that card game aspect to change up your game every time. Now, granted, if you make your own deck, you'll probably uh, find your preferred playstyle and so your opponent. But yeah, still, yeah, for sure. Even with that, every game will be different. Anyways, guys. Check you out in the review, and if not, see you next time, and happy wargaming.